In the 1980s, the main nuclear force of the United States was the Ohio nuclear-powered submarine missile carriers, 14 of them armed with nuclear ballistic missiles. More than 30 years have passed. The U.S. main adversary, the Soviet Union, collapsed. Collapsed to be reborn in an even more dangerous hypostasis, Russia. And what has changed at the core of U.S. nuclear forces? Nothing. America's main nuclear sword is still comprised of the same 14 Ohio-type nuclear-powered submarines. True, in 2008, the development of a new generation submarine, the Columbia, began, but until recently, the project progressed very slowly. The appearance of Russia's newest fourth-generation Bore missile submarines has forced the Americans to revise the U.S. national defense strategy. Their military financial plans are now focused on modernizing their nuclear arsenals. But the program to build 12 strategic missile-carrying submarines of the Columbia type is considered a priority by the U.S. Presidential Administration. Let's take a closer look at the Columbia submarine and compare it with the Beret submarine. First, what's known about this American submarine missile carrier? It'll be over 560 feet long and have a maximum width of 43 feet. A crew of 155 can be accommodated on board. The displacement will be nearly 21,000 tons. The submarine will carry a nuclear reactor that will provide unlimited range and a speed of 30 knots. Unlike the previous generation, Columbia's reactor does not need to be refueled throughout its lifetime. The engine will be electric, powered by the nuclear plant's generators. To reduce noise, the propeller will be replaced by a water jet propulsor, as is done on the Virginia-class attack submarine, which the U.S. Navy is now actively replacing the obsolete Los Angeles boats. The technical design of the Columbia is being developed by the General Dynamics Corporation, a military-industrial corporation. The ships will be built at General Dynamics Electric Boat in Newport News Shipbuilding Yards in Connecticut. Of course, you may be wondering how the new boats will differ from the old Ohio. In other words, what the taxpayers' $130 billion will be spent on. That's the amount of money estimated for the 12 Columbia submarine construction program. The lead ship will cost a fantastic $15 billion, including design costs estimated at $4 billion. Subsequent ships will cost $6 billion each. At the same time a year ago, the total cost was estimated at just $109.8 billion. For those of you who didn't get it, we mean just sarcastically. And this amount seems fantastic to us. Moreover, it's grown by almost a third. The main features of the Columbia submarines, which distinguish them from aging Ohio, will be the first one is the increased service life, up to 42 years using new, more reliable hull constructions and elements. The second is the operation without core reloading during the entire lifetime of the reactor, which will significantly reduce the time of repairs. Today, such an operation is carried out once every 10 years and takes more than a year. The third point is equipping the submarine with up-to-date armament and technical means, which will enhance the effectiveness of operation, stealth, and survivability of the submarine. This includes the installation of water jet propulsors and the main all-mode propulsion motor instead of turbo-turbo shafts and electric motors for economical running, usage of new types of soundproofing, improvement of torpedo and radio weaponry, implementation of new means of ship and weaponry control, X-shaped stern rudders. Boats can also be equipped with a Submarine Warfare Federated Tactical System, abbreviated SWIFTS, which combines sonar, optical surveillance, and weapons control. Finally, it'll be armed with advanced ballistic missiles, which will have an increased range and higher accuracy. Yes, there's no information about these missiles, not even that a decision has been made to design them. So we can assume that initially the Columbia will be armed with the same missiles as Ohio. But as we'll show later, these missiles put into service in 1990 are in no way inferior to the Russian Bulova missiles adopted for service in 2013 and with which the Bore boats are armed. The first Columbia-class boat is scheduled to be built and commissioned between 2021 and 2031 and the entire series of 12 missile carriers are to be completed by 2042. Adherence to such a plan will allow the use of these submarines until 2084. Now let us compare the technical characteristics of Colorado and the Russian Beret-class submarines. Note that the latter is already under active construction. Of the 12 planned, 6 have already been built and 5 of them have been accepted for service. 
Due to the high level of secrecy, technical information on Boreas and Columbia-class ships is scarce, but enough for a little comparison. The external dimensions of the ships are similar. The whole length is 170 to 171 meters, and the maximum diameter of the cylindrical part is 43 to 44 feet. The Russian cruiser has a displacement in the above-water position of 14.7 and a total underwater displacement of 24,000 tons. For Columbia, these figures are 18,300 and 23,100 tons, respectively. The difference is due to the peculiarities of the architecture. The Russians prefer the traditional double-hull design, outer and solid inner hulls. The Americans prefer a single solid hull. The working depth and maximum speed are close and are about 1,300 feet and 30 knots, respectively. Crew, 107 and 155 people, indicating that the Russian submarines are substantially more automated. Both types of submarines carry the same number of launching shafts, 16. The main caliber of the Beret-class submarines is the R-30 Balava solid-fuel ballistic missile with six special individual guided warheads. The starting mass is 37 tons and the range is more than 9,000 kilometers. In 2011, the Beret Project mothership, Yuri Dolgoriki, fired a Bulova missile at the target. This launch was part of the test program and was the second. The distance the missile flew was 5,800 miles. As mentioned above, the new missile for the Columbia boats is not known at all yet. So for comparison, let's take the missile the Ohio boats are armed with. It's the three-stage Trident II D5, which is 13.6 meters long and has a total weight of 59 tons. It's capable of carrying a block of 8 to 12 deployable warheads but because of restrictions imposed by Strategic Offense Arms Reduction Agreements, a maximum of six are allowed. The exact range parameters are classified. The press quotes 4,870 miles for the maximum payload and 7,500 miles for the reduced takeoff weight variant. Overall, the Trident looks like a more formidable weapon, so the new missile will be at least as good. The most important characteristic of the submarine is its level of stealth. The first-generation Russian nuclear-powered submarines were significantly inferior to the U.S. in terms of noise parameters, but as they transitioned to the next generations, the gap gradually narrowed. Both sides continue to persist in their efforts to reduce submarine physical fields. The Americans themselves consider their submarines to be the least noisy in the world, but many independent experts note significant achievements of Russian specialists in this area, allowing them to talk about parity. Now let's try to summarize. The world is not getting any safer. This after recent events in Ukraine is already obvious to everyone. Therefore, despite the fantastic costs, new strategic submarines are needed. No matter what they say about the number of people starving and dying of hunger, the number of homeless and so on, the fact that other countries of the nuclear club are also modernizing and developing their naval nuclear forces speaks in favor of rearmament. Britain has launched a program to build new successor-type missile submarines. These ships are scheduled to begin replacing existing Vanguard-class submarines starting in 2028. France is completing the re-equipment of its Triumphant boats with modern ballistic missiles and is designing the next generation of missile carriers. China continues to build Jing and Tang-class missile submarines with intercontinental range missiles. India is building the Arihant missile-carrying submarines. And the Russians, we've already said about the Russians, they're already actively building fourth-generation submarine missile carriers. So the Columbias are needed, and it's encouraging that in terms of their characteristics, they'll be the best in their class. True, some sources such as the Federation of American Scientists, FAST for short, believe that the number of boats should be lower because of the ever-decreasing number of patrols since the end of the Cold War. FAST analyzed current and past deployments of Ohio-type boats and calculated the number of annual patrol sorties. The results of that study showed a 56% decrease from 1999 to 2013. FAS argues that if the high number of annual patrol sorties from previous periods is maintained, fewer boats could be made up. However, the U.S. Navy disagrees with the scientist's assessment. What can be said here? In our opinion, more is better in this situation than less. As Napoleon said, a nation unwilling to feed its army will soon feed someone else's. And what do you think of the hundreds of billions of dollars now being spent on rearmament? Are these expenditures justified, or would they be better spent on something else? Write about that in the comments.
If you've enjoyed our video, please give us a thumbs up. That's the best reward for us, and more people will see our work that way. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There will be many more interesting videos about modern weapons.